everyone, and welcome back. I'm Monica McLemore, and I'm an associate professor in the Family Healthcare Nursing Department at the University of California, San Francisco, and an affiliated scientist with Advancing New Standards in Reproductive Health. The goal of this session is to learn about birthing people's experiences and how these experiences contribute to maternal health outcomes. I have the pleasure and honor of introducing our first speaker, who is a collaborator, colleague, co-conspirator, and friend of mine, Dr. Karen Scott. She is an associate professor of obstetrics and gynecology and reproductive sciences and, and uh, in the Department of Humanities and Social Sciences at the University of California, San Francisco. Karen, you ready? Yes. <clears throat> Hi, everyone. Greetings. Thank you, Nasim and Dr. McMore for um, introducing me for this opportunity to briefly share my program of participatory improvement and implementation of science, practice, and research, and how we prioritize patient narratives from Black mothers and birthing people, community wisdom from Black women-led serving community organizations, and content expertise from Black women scholars, activists, and artists. Next slide. So let's start with where we want to go, a place of promise and potential that we call sacred birth. Our definition serves the purpose of decolonizing attitudes, activities, actors, spaces, and experiences, and then calls for advocacy to restore Black midfree-led models of care and Black dual support as part of its campaign. Next. In the spirit of transparency, I want to share four truths to demonstrate our beliefs about and feelings for Black people. We hold these truths to be self-evident that we believe, trust, value, and adore Black people, women, and mothers. Black people, women, and mothers are worthy, period. We protect, prioritize, cite, and amplify Black women's people's voices, intellectual thoughts, lived experiences, and political activism. We activate and advance the power and potential and not pathology of Black people, women, and mothers and our given and chosen kin. Next. Despite the establishment of perinatal quality collaboratives, advances in reproductive technologies, and social protections such as higher education, hospitals do not keep Black women safe. Their primary drivers include a clear um, a lack of clear ethical boundaries, perpetuation of whiteness or white adjacent leadership, and a hierarchy of knowledge construction that is deeply grounded in anti-Black misogynistic ideologies and practices. The secondary drivers manifest as poor science that continuously fails to illuminate the oppression, resistance, and resilience of Black women's and people's lived experiences due to a lack of historical context and cultural and scientific rigor. Failure to, inter to interrogate, disrupt, and reimagine QI ethics, leadership, knowledge, and science leads to missed opportunities to name massage noir as coined by Dr. Moya Bailey and not race or gender alone as the drivers for the presence, permeation, and exacerbation of maternal and perinatal equities. We must speak with truth and transparency about the problem through a structural analysis of power, privilege, positionality, policies, people, and potential. Without truth, transparency, and trust, we fail to transform health service provision, training, and evaluation through dignified and equitable community partnerships and participation. Without community participation and partnership, we continue to weaponize race against Black women's interests, humanity, and liberation during hospitalization for birth. Next. So again, despite evidence to the contrary, the construction and dissemination. Next slide, please. So despite evidence to the contrary, the construction and dissemination of knowledge continues to reproduce and reinforce disturbing narratives that Black bodies are subhumans, that Black lives are unworthy, and Black mothers and people are to blame for disproportionate adverse birth outcomes. These misconceptions are then disseminated through many disciplines, including QI and implementation science, in the form of problematic stereotypes, scripts, and stories. These social and clinical norms then invade and affect interactions, communication, counseling, decision-making, and dissemination and documentation in patient handoffs and electronic health records. Next. In my 2021 manuscript in feminist anthropology, I explain how the spread of racism and perinatal QI is magnified by the lack of accountability for controlling, constraining, and censoring Black women's voices and intellectual thought. 
The problem with perinatal QI innovation and transformation is the hypervisibility of Black women as victims and the structural exclusion and erasure of Black women as patient, community, and content experts. Most perinatal QI leaders and data scientists lack nuanced knowledge and insight into, into the various ways that power relations, differentials, and dynamics contribute to variation in quality and safety. Next. Without any legal or ethical oversight, the fathers of perinatal QI birthed the practice of epistemic redlining here on the slide in red. This is a hidden ranking system that assigns value and visibility to the humanity, the scholarship, the voices and lived experiences of white people or people adjacent to and protective of whiteness. Epistemic redlining then creates two forms of injustice that undermine black women's capacity as knowledge generators. Epistemic redlining, epistemic injustice then discounts the credibility of Black women's voices and narratives of their own lived experiences, resulting in testimonial injustice. While hermeneutical injustice renders Black women as incapable of making sense of their own experiences and of having them understood by others. So a deeper analysis of perinatal QI reveals an abusive over-reliance on quantitative data from diseased or dead Black female bodies for the legitimization of separate but equal ethics and practices in perinatal QI. We must interrogate the lie that the absence of clinical pathology signifies the presence of perinatal equity. Next. Thus, we also argue that the perinatal QI epistemology reproduces misogynistic misconceptions about Blackness, Black womanhood, and Black birthing people that undermine our humanity and justice. Next. Beginning with conversations with Black women in community, humanities, and social sciences, and philanthropy in the, in the design phase, Sacred Birth applies Black feminist anthropological theories and methodologies to activate an unapologetic and fierce authority to declare two truths of resistance, the lives of Black women and people with the capacity for reproduction and pregnancy-related experiences are worthy. And two, Black women and people deserve high quality care experiences that honor the full expression of our humanity, power, and potential. Next. Prior to 2021, no validated participatory patient reported experience and measure of obstetric racism, known as the PREM OB scale, existed to characterize the impact of the quality of care on the patient experience as defined for, by, and with Black mothers and birthing people in dignified and equitable partnerships with Black women community leaders and Black women scholars. Next. The sacred birth aims are listed on the slide. We successfully completed aim two, November 30th, 2020, and aim one, April 30th, 2021. Our current focus is ongoing data analysis and dissemination under aim three. Next. Sacred Birth started a participatory QI movement informed by the scholarship of Black feminist anthropologists, such as the late Dr. Leith Mullins' exploration of oppression, resistance, and resilience in the Harlem Birthright Project and acts of medical racism and obstetric violence, as defined by Dr. Donnie Davis's explanatory framework of obstetric racism in her publications and book, Reproductive Injustice. We operationalize Black feminist praxis, reproductive justice, and research justice through the four modalities of cultural rigor. Traditional survey development processes were adapted by a Black women-led transdisciplinary and transgenerational team of Black women scholars, Black women-led community organizations, a health services researcher, and Black mothers and birthing people. Measure development steps included adopting these explanatory frameworks, co-facilitated focus groups by researchers and community with Black birthing people in Oakland and LA, a scoping review of existing patient experience measures using a novel cultural rigor screening protocol, mapping of existing items onto domains identified from our focus groups and creation of de novo items, a modified Delphi survey of primarily Black women subject matter experts to prioritize the items, cognitive interviewing with Black mothers and birthing people to refine the items, and last final review and compilation for pilot testing by our, by our researchers in our community. Next, we applied a Black feminist practice to again examine power relations, differentials, and dynamics within the medical and cultural industrial complex and utilize the mixed methods, multi-cohort, Participatory approach to center the narratives and lived experiences of 880-880, Black women and people as patient content and community experts. Next. Our participatory QI model requires a completion of easy one, two, three steps. 
name the problem, define the problem through the Black feminist intellectual thought and political activism, and design and implement methods to measure, monitor, and modify the problem, and mobilize action based on patient narratives and community wisdom. Next. Sacred birth ignites a paradigm shift that liberates and redistributes the epicenter of power and knowledge towards Black mothers, birthing people, scholars, and community leaders. Next. The illustration on this slide shows how the arc of cultural rigor transports us from the problem to solutions that center patient experiences as defined for, by, and with Black mothers and birthing people. Next. I defined and applied the formal modalities of cultural rigor to philanthropy in 2020. Now I advance perinatal justice and accountability in hospital perinatal QI and births through cultural rigor as a social movement, as an analytic framework, a praxis, and a vision. Next. I invite you to read our 2020 publications describing the translation of our work into novel and nuanced perinatal theories and tools. Next. Cultural rigor requires Black women-led research teams of Black women scholars with academic and community partners where public health is the common link. Next. Cultural rigor also requires a Black women-led communication, marketing, and design team. Next. Sacred Birth, the first of its kind, is a QI research study that generated new knowledge to disrupt and transform hospital-based service provision, evaluation, and training through the translation of Black feminist anthropological theory of obstetric racism into novel QI science, practice, and research methods. Next. This slide represents a birthing narr narrative, a Black birthing narrative that we use in hospital trainings to demonstrate the duality of the prem OB scale. Next. In trainings, we demonstrate how the PRIM OB skill provides novel data as evidence of obstetric racism through survey completion and also serves as an interpretive tool where the text serves as the unit of analysis. This QI practice is called the Scott Davis Narrative Data Analytic Method. The text is color coded, linking the domain that is violated or protected to the exemplar in the text from any narrative or from an electronic health record. Next, we also developed the virtual quality improvement prioritization by affected communities or VQPAC protocol. The VQPAC applies Black feminist ethnographic methodology to describe different forms of resistance and resilience that Black women community leaders adopt to mitigate obstetric racism and power inequities that emerge from supporting Black mothers and birthing people during hospital births. Our community leaders identify 74 and prioritize potential 44 potential social cultural quality improvement topics across the prem OB scale domains. This slide highlights our community leaders and the top two mitigations for each domain. Next, thank you for your time and attention. Please go to our website to learn more about implementation and scale up as we advance the sacred birth QI movement to end obstetric racism. Next, again, thank you very much. Thank you so much, Dr. Scott. I learned something every time you talk. I am so grateful and proud to be a collaborator with you and the incredible work that you've been doing. Thank you.